everybody, Tyre Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well today. We're already uh, pretty far into February, and with it of course being a short month, outlooks tend to come in a little bit sooner for the future here, and the March outlook has actually just come out today. So we're going to go ahead and talk about that, and there's going to be some big changes on the way along with this some of which are seen on these uh, monthly temperature and precip outlooks but also looking a little further down the line we could anticipate some uh, other changes that i haven't talked about as much i did talk about it more during the spring outlook video so be sure to check that out link to that will be in the top right corner here but as a whole here one thing that i want to make note of because normally i start out with the uh, temperature map I want to make note of the increase in activity as far as precipitation is concerned towards the heart of the country. There has been a lot of talk lately about maybe the increasing chances of uh, severe storms towards the plains. And this signal right here uh, kind of piques my interest a bit because of the simple fact that we had um, guys like Reed Timmer even talking about this because the uh, El Nino is going to probably be changing from as we uh, transition from spring into summer and then maybe even the back half of the year we could be looking towards winter so this could be one of the first of many signals that we have to keep watching of course like i said this is pretty far out and this is prone to changing and then also another thing to make note of is the fact that this is over a 30-day average this is not going to be happening every waking moment of every day as i say in all of my outlook videos but I'm definitely seeing a signal here with the temperature map as well that kind of correlates a little bit with the storm track and also maybe even the threat of severe weather here. So I am kind of side eyeing this and March is typically that time where we start to see a little bit of a ramp up here. So I do have a little bit of concern about this, not necessarily fear, but more so definitely, uh, it's definitely got my attention, I'll say. So. We have that cold air a little further to the south and warm air to the north. What we're looking for is collision points, and I do think that we can see that, especially off the uh, wavelength of the Rockies here. I do think I do kind of lean a little further to the south towards the severe weather threat, but a lot of this is going to be heavily dependent upon our storm track, of course. Like I said, it mainly looks like it's going to be here, but I think we could get a couple of systems to the south here. And then there's other parameters like moisture return, instabilities, etc., uh, low pressure systems a little bit more intricate stuff that we'll see more so into the uh, short range here but simple fact in the matter is we're gonna be a lot more uh, on guard here for severe weather do of course have to still keep an eye out for winter weather in march winter storms do still sometimes happen but we may see a uh, slightly lower frequency of those that being said here, let's actually go ahead and take a quick look at what our current Nino index is right now. We're starting to trend away from that strong El Nino now. We've actually been out of it since mid-January here, so we're already starting to see some changes. We're getting back to a uh, regular or mid-grade El Nino, and with the trend expected to drop further from here, actually, if we go ahead and look at the uh, model data, by the time we get towards March, we're going to be right at about maybe a week El Nino at this point. And by the time we get towards the back half of spring, actually, we could be on the we could be on either the weekend or maybe even starting to push towards neutral Enzo right here. So that's definitely something that we'll have to keep watching because of the simple fact that El Nino is a big and I mean big component when it comes to the weather across the world in particular but especially in the u.s in particular as well so it's definitely going to be a lot more to cover here especially as we uh, transition towards a uh, la nina towards the end of the year as well but as far as march is concerned in particular still hanging towards el nino but in those transition points we can also get some really active and maybe even wild weather so not to scare anyone but definitely if you're living in tornado alley dixie alley definitely want to be paying attention there and then here also is the discussion that we were that i was uh, referring to here which is indicating the uh, probability from an el nino to neutral enzo uh, showing up by april and june 2024 and then 
Also, La Nina odds increasing in the summer. So could be an active uh, spring and summer when it comes to severe weather. I know I mainly was supposed to be talking about March here, but just want to kind of give us a little bit of a spoiler here or a potential spoiler here. They're all, this can always change, but the probability already being at 79%, I have pretty good confidence that we will see that transition occur. So as far as the uh, temperature on a week to week basis right now, this is looking at temperature anomalies. We're seeing below average temperatures right around um, next week for the Southeast here. That is in correlation with the system that we were talking about on yesterday, which is gonna sneak in a little bit of cold air on the back end of that trough here. It's gonna be a nice little frontal system that comes in. Also, there is, was uh, some interest in a wintry system over here towards the mid-Atlantic. That system is actually taking shape right now, and we will be talking about that more tomorrow. But the uh, increase in cold air to the south here and then also warm air starting to build also definitely leads me to wonder if there could be a severe setup down the line to end the month as well. And we've been talking about that for a little while here. If we go to week two here, we start to see a lot more warm air begin to come into play. We've been seeing more ridges starting to build here across the central part of the country as well. So any big storm system that may interact with that, which we tend to get during the uh, back half of winter and into spring, definitely would be something to watch in regards to severe weather. I think winter weather threats will still be possible, but like I said, severe weather is unfortunately expected to ramp up here. So we go towards the start of March here. We start to see a shift also with the uh, PNA here. We're looking at a negative PNA where it's colder out to the west and warmer out to the east. And that's something that needs to be monitored very closely because again, whenever you see the uh, shift in air masses, that's often when we tend to see some fireworks and this is going to be a persistent trend at least maybe even the middle of the month and then we're kind of starting to get into that point where we're almost at a little bit of a neutral point where it's a little bit warmer out to the west but it's also kind of warm out to the east there are these little pockets of cold air so it could be uh, up in the air towards the back half of the month of March and then towards the end here we're starting to see a, another signal of maybe a negative PNA as well albeit the cold air is a little bit more towards the southwest so we switch over to precip here we can see that at least through that first week things actually look like they're going to be uh, slowing down here towards the eastern half of the country uh, the first half of winter was uh, pretty active across this region here, but it doesn't seem like uh, we're going to end up seeing anything to end the month as much. It could still, we could still get precip here, but it's going to be at a much slower rate than what we've been seeing. And really with the way the weather pattern has been, you'll, you'll see systems, but they won't be dropping significant amounts of precipitation. Maybe once every couple of weeks has been the recent trend across the southeast, depending on the area that you live in. And then after that point, this is another thing that kind of piques my interest is that bullseye that we see over here towards Florida and the southeast, then over towards the northeast. So like I said, it looks like uh, we start to get more active. This is definitely uh, kind of uh, correlating well with uh, my thought on the active weather pattern and uh, ramping up here as we get into March, especially towards the midpoint in March. I don't know exactly what this will bring here, this signal, but this could be potentially maybe severe weather setup. Kind of difficult to near impossible to pick uh, pick up on that just based on temperature, um, precip anomaly, excuse me. Wow, temperature. But still, this is something that, uh, is something again that I'm interested in and going to be monitoring over the coming days and weeks here. And then after that, looks like uh, we start to calm down just a little bit over here but then only for another signal over here to maybe show itself over here more so towards the plains here so it's interesting to note that uh, again like I said before a uh, really well-renowned meteorologist by the name of Reed Timmer had um, mentioned maybe an active severe weather season for the Great Plains here this could be the first signs of that starting to come into fruition here. Whether that ends up being true or not, we'll have to see. But considering how 
well-renowned he is and pretty accurate with his forecast. I, I tend to agree with that. But that being said here, I'm going to end out this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You found it useful. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. And if you're new around here, definitely would consider subscribing. We'll be keeping the updates going as much as we can. There will be another March update at the end of this month. But till then, until the next video, I'll see you guys later. It's been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. Have a good rest of your evening.